What's up, Chiefs Kingdom? You're on another episode of Chiefs Focus Live. We got Quentin back from uh, VK. We got Caleb. We got our man Bryce from Arrowhead News and uh, Rumors Report. We wanted to have him on because he does a really good job on his show. And what are you, 13? Yeah, 13. 13 years old. And he's destroying it on YouTube. So I want everybody to check him out. What I've seen, he has better takes than half the people on Twitter. Damn right. So uh, it's not that hard. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's but he's true. 13. That's he's 13. I mean, you know, you got a lot of 40 year olds out there that I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's get to some really quick news. Tyree kills in trouble. We had a feeling that was coming. We talked about this prior shows. That it was a it was a matter of time before he got in some kind of legal issue down in Miami. I'm sure there's other things that allegedly haven't been brought up yet, but he smacked a guy in the head at the dock at the marina. Um, apparently got into an altercation with him and smacked him in the head. So we don't know what the outcome of this is going to be, but if this tells you guys anything at all, it was a very smart move on Veach's part, given the fact that we know of other things that went on prior to the trade, allegedly. And we have to say allegedly. Um, don't know what's going to happen with it. Who knows if he gets, you know, here's the problem with it. If you get in trouble and your agent's not there, your agent can usually bail you out of stuff. But when your agent's with you and you smack a guy in the back of the head, your agent's not going to be able to bail you out of that that easy. So <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? Probably expect a couple games suspension at least just because that's what the NFL does. Regardless if it pans out into something or not, that's what's going to happen. I want to get to that, and we want to talk about this Chris Jones drama rumor crap that's going around all over Twitter, especially in a lot of the group chats. Uh, Bryce, what's your take on Chris Jones? What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to give my take. Let's all give our take really quick, and then we'll move on to the next segment. Yeah, well, he didn't show up to the ring ceremony, but he did say he was uh, supposedly sick. Um, but uh, for contract-wise, I mean, he's about to be 29 years old. I think extending him makes sense uh, for for the Chiefs. I mean, he's. I mean, losing Chris Jones would just be terrible for the defensive line as it's, I mean, it's the defensive line's not amazing right now, but it's not terrible. So losing Chris Jones would make it pretty bad. So yeah, definitely need him around. Caleb. Um, I would like to bring Chris Brown back for the simple reason. He is the quarterback of our defense. After Tyron Matthews left, I thought everything else shifted over to Chris Jones and he's stepped up. I'd say this is probably the best year of his career. Once again, he's been snubbed as the, from being the defensive player of the year. Regardless, he'd rather have a Super Bowl ring than the AC Championship ring, if you know what I'm saying there. Um, he was able to sack Joe Burrow two times. He's got two playoff sacks. I mean, he's a two-time Super Bowl MVP. He, I think he's at a point where he wants stability in his career, and I believe he will stay at the Chiefs, but the issue comes down is to the money aspect and factor. Now, JP was spot on and said this a day before this news came out. The news was that JP called and told me he's going to get signed by training camp. We got the news about that yesterday. Same thing. So listen to us because we've been saying these things for a while. He's going to sign. I believe those are going to happen. I don't see him holding out a, con a training camp due to the fact he didn't do it last time around, but he's not going to go to mandatory OTAs and things like that. As much as I would like to see players go that person like Mahomes does that, it's not really hurting my feelings regardless of there. I will say this. You know he's going to, be, he's going to resign. The Chiefs need to find the possibly future person they could bring in to kind of help along with Chris Jones. We need to find that Chris Jones 2.0 or another version of it. Because Chris Jones was originally supposed to be a first-round pick, but fell into the top of the second round. The Chiefs able to get him. So I think he will sign, but I am concerned kind of moving to the future where, all right, who is who are we going to get eventually to help replace him? Okay. Quentin? Yeah, um, a couple of things here. I also think that he's going to get signed. I don't think there's any reason to not think so. Look, we're still in June, right? There's still plenty of time to come up before – training camp and let's be honest uh deadlines make deals right so this could take up a day before 
training camp officially begins before you know the team heads up there how many times have we seen it not just in kansas city but around the league where teams been in negotiation with the player especially guys who are on the franchise tag and it takes up till the day before that is signed so i'm not freaking out yet i think it's going to happen if you look at his cap number it just makes sense for him to get re-signed from kansas city's perspective he's got a 28 million dollar cap hit heading into this year and Kansas City would like to get that number down. The way to sort of get him on, quote unquote, a bargain, a bargain deal to not end up paying him top of the market kind of money over the next few years is to sign him before his contract is officially up. And it benefits Chris Jones to sign a year early because he can get more guaranteed money and a nice signing bonus up front. So it works for both guys. I think that he'll sign in that 26 to $28 million range has his APY. Uh, but the, you know, so it'll be, it sounds like it, it, his cap number, but the difference is, is that money is more flexible and it's going to be beneficial for both sides. Plus everybody likes getting uh, that huge salary bonus. So I'm not worried about it. I don't think anybody should be really that worried about it because we know he wants to be here. We know that the team wants him to be here. This is not like his franchise tag season where Chris Jones hadn't gotten paid yet. Uh, he's on he's on this contract. And, you know, one thing that I want to point out is that, you know, it's very rare for a player to finish a four year contract out all the way. Just think of how many times we talk about, you know, money in the NFL, where if you sign a three year contract, it's really a two year deal or a four year deal is really a three year deal because that last year is a lot of funny money. Well, this is the opportunity for Chris Jones to you know, add another couple years on to it and to continue his career here in Kansas City. So I agree with the sentiment that this defense would, would not be what it was and what it can be without Chris Jones. He is the best pass rusher on this team, despite being a defensive tackle. And if we're going to get any any sort of production outside of our young defensive edge rushers, Chris Jones has to be here. So it just makes sense for both mm -hmm. parties to re-sign here and to stay here for another three to four years. And another point to kind of piggyback off Gordon's point, he really didn't bring this up, but Chris Jones throughout his career really hasn't dealt with many injury issues. So he, right point. now he's – huh? That's a good point. He hasn't really dealt with many injuries. So it's like go ahead, sign him uh, sign him now, get him to where he's into his – not maybe a little close to his mid-30s to see what you can get production-wise, bring someone in. I mean, it's going to come to a point where he's going to slow down, but it's a good point that he has not really had any issues – injury wise because of that i mean he's been pretty much dominant for the most part yeah he's gone through double teams but what we see is when you finally have a defensive unit that's collective and everyone's inputting and helping it's made the defense a whole so much better i believe that's the difference why the chiefs were able to surpass the Bengals in the AFC championship game and also take one step notch in the super bowl was even though they're getting slapped around and getting beat up they still stand firm and kept continuing to fight and fight every single play okay so I agree with everything. Um, Chris Jones doesn't really necessarily have to go to OTAs. That is something that everybody's making a big deal about. The other rumor is is that he's waiting for Williams to sign to see what – because if he doesn't, then it's going to change the market in two years. And, I mean, honest to God, the scenarios have been really out there. Um, I don't think Williams' contract is really going to weigh in on – what Chris Jones wants. So if that's what everybody wants to assume, that's fine. He made it very clear through his agents and his agents have said he doesn't want to be the highest paid. He's happy with being the third highest paid. He wants to stay in Kansas city. He's planted roots. He's got everything there. He owns business. He's got business there. So it's not like he wants to leave. That's the first thing. Second thing is, you have to look at it from two different perspectives. The Chiefs are going to sign him right before training camp. They have to. If they go into the season, I, I guess they could technically wait until the end of training camp, but he can't. you can't go into the season on that contract. Because if you do, that's the contract you owe him. You can't extend him past, I think it's either the end of September or the beginning of October. I can't remember what it is, but... Yes, his contract goes until March of next year. We can do it at the end of his of the end of the season, but you can't do it 
while the season's going. Because if you do, you're going to owe him $28 million plus his bonus, which brings it to $32 million. I would, I would venture to say that Veach is going to get this done prior to training camp or right, you know, at the beginning, within the first day or so. But I feel like it's going to happen two days prior. Yeah, it's um, if you just look at the if you look at his cap hit, technically he has zero guaranteed salary heading into this year. Right. Because this is where we talk about how, you know, that last year is a bunch of funny money. So this is it's an opportunity for him to seal up some more money. And like I said, get that signing bonus. Um, I think what you brought up is is important to discuss signing him before he finishes that contract because absolutely you cannot let him hit the free agent market. Now we know Chris Jones will not break that $31 million, right? That's the Aaron Donald money. Aaron Donald is up here. Chris Jones is, is the next guy, but there's a gap between Aaron Donald and Chris Jones. There's a reason why Aaron Donald has won defensive player of the year. I believe three separate times. Yep. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for, I'll continue to say this. If it weren't for Aaron Donald, uh, who may actually be the best defensive player we have ever seen play this game? Chris Jones may be talked about as the best defensive tackle of this uh, of this time frame, but because Aaron Donald, who has been so dominant and so unique, you know, Chris Jones slides into that number two spot, and we have a conversation about who's the next best guy. So it just makes sense for both parties to come in and come up with a deal. And when we talk about player or you know team friendly deals, we really mean the flexibility of it. Right to be able to move some of that money around. We know Kansas City likes to make moves in the middle of the season. Right in the past, they've gone out, they've made trades like the Kadarius Tony trade, for example. Um, during the first Super Bowl, they went up and picked up Terrell Suggs. Right, so you need just a little bit of cap space to move around some money to you know save up four or five million dollars. And if you're able to sign Chris Jones to that extension, lower that cap number. That allows you a little bit of that flexibility because if there's an injury or you just see an opportunity to make your team better, this is a way to do it without having to prorate any other money down the line. I just think it makes sense for everybody. And, you know, he'll make, he'll sign a, a nice, you know, $26, 28000000 million a year deal. And for the next three, four years, and Chris Jones hopefully retires as a Kansas City Chief. Yeah, he'll get his four-year deal. Bryce, you got anything to add? Uh, yeah, I think he's really. Yeah, I think he's gonna get a four-year deal, and I think I think he will. I think he will retire a Kansas City Chief. I th- he's uh, he stated he wants to, and I, I think he's I think he's going to retire a Kansas City Chief. Yeah, I agree. Well, um, now that we got that out of the way, because there's been so much speculation going on. There's group chats that we're in that I honest to God I have to mute them. Um, some of the things that are said in there are just are mind-boggling. Can I, can I have one more thing? You can add whatever and you this want. Will- yeah, this will be a conversation probably later on. Uh, I, I've seen that, you know, there's talks about how Kansas City can replace Chris Jones. Um, I don't think that that's how you should look at it. No. You know, moving forward, uh, when when Chris Jones retires, you don't replace a Chris Jones. You don't find another defensive tackle like him. Um, I just don't think that that's fair. I think what Kansas City is looking to do is to find his production with outside guys like the rest of the NFL. I think Kansas City, I don't want to say lucky because I don't think you really luck into something like that, but Kansas City was able to bring in a guy that has shown to be excellent at his position. And saying he's excellent may even be downgrading his ability at the defensive tackle position, specifically in the pass rush game. I think what Kansas City can do is to try and replace some of his production by continuing to invest in the defensive edge pass uh, instead of you know, trying to find a replacement for Chris Jones, because there's a reason why, you know, I will continue to say that if it weren't for Aaron Donald, Chris Jones would be talked about as the best defensive tackle. It's just unfortunate that, you know, we have one of the best defensive players of all time playing. It's like every other quarterback in the league. You know, there's Patrick Mahomes, then there's everybody else. Yeah, It's very similar at the defensive tackle Mm -hmm. position. All right. You know, it's so funny too, because you, if you look at the gap, it's similar to like left tackle gap when it comes to the market value and the contracts, because you have like, you know, you got Trent Williams up there at $32 million a year. The next guy is $23 million a year. Then the guy below that is 13 million a year. Yeah. So you have such a, there's such a gap and that's similar to what goes on with a defensive tackle. I mean, there's a huge gap between Aaron Donald. There's not such a huge gap between him and Chris Jones, but if you, go below Chris Jones, there's a lot 
Yeah. There's huge gaps. So you have to look at it from that perspective too. The market value is going to dictate a lot, um, but it's not going to dictate what Jones decides to do. He's made a lot of money with the Chiefs. There's and he no can doubt. continue to make a lot of money. And he can Thank continue you. to that make a true. lot of money. That is true, especially yeah. with the playoffs. So, correct. So I don't think he's, you know, look, he's, I don't, I know we say this about a lot of different players other than I don't agree with, I just want a ring because Chris already has two. It's he would like generally wants to play with the Chiefs. And now that he has Joe Cullen, that has really completely changed that defensive line. This is the time for him to really shine towards the end of his career and still pick up a couple more rings. So I don't think you're going to see him. I mean, I, in fact, I know you're not going to see him go anywhere. So the, I think the whole conversation is just, you know, people talking. I mean, I've heard people say that a couple of people, negative guys on is it 6'10 or 8'10, uh, one of them is Carrington Harrison, must have said something pretty negative about Chris Jones, and that set an uproar roar going again. But he's the most – he's like he's like the Ryan Clark of Kansas City. He's just freaking – he's just negative, man. The guy's negative about everything. I don't know. I don't get it, but whatever. Uh, I do like Fizz's. Uh, I like that. You gotta yeah. do that. Yeah. Well, I don't like him. Um, I like what Fizz has to say. I think CJ could be the, the Chiefs' version of Fletcher. Cox. Look, Fletcher Cox is thirty-six years old, and he's still, he's still out there playing. doing his damn he's thing. Still so, yeah. still playing and still playing at a high level. So I don't. I, I'm not going to say he's not. Or, or Fizz is absolutely right. I think Chris could actually be that. I think the only injuries, going back to what Caleb brought up, was a wrist injury. Yeah, that was something that I wanted to bring up, but it just got you know pushed to the back of my brain. But yeah, it was a wrist injury, wrist injury, and you know, that was, was really about it. He still played. Yeah, that was really about all he had wrong with him. Now it did linger a little bit, but he didn't really have any other major injuries that kept him. And now he got sick and he got COVID once, but as far as like physical injuries, the wrist was the worst thing that's ever happened to him. So. Caleb's right. I mean, you're talking about a guy that is going to be 29 years old. He's been in the league for, let's see, he got drafted in what, 17 or 18? It was 15. 15. Yep. So you're looking at seven years in the league and relatively injury free. So I, I, I would I'd say uh, that's a pretty damn good gamble to put that money on, on Chris Jones. Hell, Aaron Donald, I think, has had more injuries <clears throat> than Chris Jones has. Yeah, especially so. this last year. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Aaron Donald. It looks like, well, there were discussion as a possible trade with him. I don't know if that will happen. I'm surprised he hasn't really retired, but, I mean, he's he almost did. to play. I mean, he almost he's did, still so. got it. He's got he it. It'd be interesting to kind of see what will he be able to do the next couple of years. But Chris Jones is in a great position. It's going to work out for the Chiefs, so I'm all happy and I'm ready for it. Yeah, Chris Jones has played in the league for seven years and has missed six games due to injury. Yeah, so he's missed less than one game a year due yeah, to yeah. injury. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just—I mean, that's crazy to think about. It's such a violent position. What are you gonna say, Bryce? Yeah. So if <clears> I can <throat> add just something, uh, if Chris Jones, Chris Jones has already uh, got two Super Bowl rings. So if he didn't want to be on the team. Uh, I mean, I don't. Uh, he could go to a different team and chase money. He already got two Super Bowl rings. He can go to a different team and get a big bag of money. But he's choosing to stay in Kansas City, and that's obviously showing us he likes the city, the fans, and just the organization of Kansas City. And I think he's if he hasn't left already, I, I just really don't see him leaving at all. Yeah, I agree with Good you. Point. I absolutely agree with you. All right, what's the next topic? I know one of you guys got a topic. Which one was it? I think it was you, Caleb. Did you have a topic? Yes, this is inspired by Quentin. He was getting a little frustrated with the fans this morning. I was um, getting a little spicy. That's he was like he was getting a little spicy. He's getting a little spicy. So as we remember, back February was February twelfth. We all got in here. We we're all happy, excited. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl six months from now, and now we're at the point now, and it's very frustrating. As much as the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, we have to keep getting reminded what the Eagles did. And this is something that was brought up, and Quentin, you did uh, did this tweet. Um, basically, was saying that the Eagles have, num- have the number one defense and have the number one offense. But it didn't get them anyone Super Bowl. So my wondering to you guys is why do we think we're getting this continue? Like, it feels like whenever a team besides the Chiefs 
uh, wins. They basically set the record straight. But when it comes to Chiefs, we won. But they're but the individual like, but this happened, this happened, this happened. Do you see this continue to happen from years to come? Because I feel like at this point, yeah, they had number one offense, they had number one defense, helped my fantasy team. Thank you very much. But they could not overcome Mahomes and the Chiefs. What do you guys overall thoughts on this? Because I have a feeling, especially the Chiefs go back to back. We're going to hear more and more and more of this continuing to happen Hold over on. the next few years. Let me jump in here really quick because I'm going to preach this until I'm dead. People are going to criticize similar to what they did with the Patriots. The Patriots kind of deservingly needed the criticism because they lived off their defense. Now, but oh, go ahead. No, all I'm going to say is strength of schedule is freaking everything. And nobody wants to take that into consideration. They had one of the weakest schedules in football last year. They played, in fact, I think it was 29th or 30th. It was a pretty weak schedule. They yeah. were just railroading teams. Absolutely. Then you play a team, two teams in the playoffs. One of them shouldn't have been in there. And the other one was on their four-string quarterback that ain't seen the field since Moby Dick was a minnow. So let's just put this into perspective. That all-world defensive line that they had, zero sacks, six pressures on Mahomes. Zero sacks, six pressures. We got, we had Jalen Hurts out of the pocket running for his life six different times and actually technically got two sacks on him. So they can talk about how great they were and how great they are, which I'm not going to take anything away from them. They're a good football team, but they lost a lot this year. Okay. They lost. Look, I, people can say what they want. We are a perfect example of what a coach can do for you. When you have a Bob Sutton or Don't say you that have, anymore. Or you have it's just bags, perfect, his initial. And then let's just take into consideration mm-hmm. the difference between um, what was his name prior to Joe Cullen? Uh, I'm not for sure. I'll know Can't Sam th- Madison. He was a cornerback yeah, he was coach. A corner, he was a cornerback coach. Yeah, he sucked. But I can't stand the guy. I'm glad he's gone. Stay in Miami. Stay wherever you're at. Don't care what happens to you. I'm sure there's a waterfall somewhere that you can slide down. But the whole point is coaching makes a, a huge difference in the way a team operates, whether it's position coaches, head coach, offensive, defensive coordinator. It makes zero difference. We are a great example of what a team can do when you have the right defensive line coach. We're a great example of what a team can do when you have the right cornerbacks coach, which we have the right on both sides. The right one is in both positions and skill positions. They lost both of their, their, they lost their offensive coordinator to a head coaching job. They lost their defensive coordinator to a head coaching job. I don't care who they sign. It makes me zero difference. They may be great, but, but, when you step into a system that worked really well one year against the second easiest schedule in the league, and then all these other teams got better, you really, yeah, you went out and signed every player on the planet from Georgia. But that doesn't mean those coaches are going to be able to coach those players up to get them ready. You still have aging players on that team that re-signed for another season, a.k.a. Fletcher Cox. And one other guy, the other guy that Andy Reid drafted, what's his name? Jason Peters. Jason Peters. Yep. That guy's like 97 years old. You can't you can't expect them to come out and be the exact same team they were last year. They're going to have a harder schedule. There's no doubt about it. Because teams did get better in the NFC. Not by much, but they got better. It didn't take much. Honestly, it really didn't take a whole, mu- a whole lot more to get better to be able to beat the Eagles more than what they did last year. So you got the 49ers, which has the true number one defense in the NFL, period. Yeah. Fight them. Fight them all day long because it ain't going to be the same as it was last year. You're not going to be on your four-string quarterback. It, I'm just telling you, people can brag up they want, but it's not going to be the same as it was last year. That's all I have to say about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, the the fact that – you don't get to choose who you play, obviously. So strength of schedule and the context around it matters. But, you know, the fact that they they did have, you know, 
quality guys all along the offense and defensive front. Uh, what were they a little overrated and talked about? You know, is this defensive line the second coming of the '85 Bears? Yeah, I think so. I think that it was a little, it was a little too much hype. But when you have a dead week before the Super Bowl, that's going to happen, right? When you just when you have nothing going on and you're just leading up to the Super Bowl, that's what's going to happen. Um, I think that. You know, Kansas City, I think there were way more questions asked about their offensive line heading up to the Super Bowl. And, you know, when when you're able to shut down what was deemed to be the best defensive line in the NFL, and you're pretty much bringing back, you're bringing back the same interior, right? And no matter where Kansas City ends up playing, Dewan Jones, or uh, Dewan Jones, Jawan Taylor, I think it's an upgrade at either spot whether they have him play right tackle or if they have him play left tackle. Uh, I expect him to take reps at both positions, and we'll just see what happens there. I think it's an upgrade there. And then Donovan Smith, I think he's – if he ends up playing right uh, uh, left tackle, then maybe maybe he's he's not as good at the left tackle position as what, they, as what the Chiefs had. But that means you're getting a hell of an upgrade at the right tackle position. So I think no matter what combination you end up seeing as where guys play, I think the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line is going to be better going into this season. And then if you look at our defensive line, man, I think you could make an argument that this defensive line is better too. So, you know, I know the PFF put out that tweet that, you know, they're the number one offense and defensive line. Man, I don't, I'm not so sure about that because I think Kansas City has a real argument to make that, that they're going to be there at least for one of those spots. I know they don't have this God-tier level defensive end, right, like some of these other teams. They don't have a Watt. They don't have a they don't have a Bosa, right? They don't have a Miles Garrett. They don't have any of these big names. But what they do have is a ton of pieces on a, on a defense and offensive line that are just really good at their job. And I think moving forward, we should expect to be towards the top of the NFL and, you know, depending on how the schedule works out and who you end up facing, I think that it should be at least considered here in the off season that Kansas city should be in the conversation of one of the best on both sides. Bryce. Yeah, they should be considered um, one of the best uh, on both sides every year, but the, uh, they're never going to really get that because you got the Eagle fans, you got the Jaguar fans, Bengal fans, Bill fans, Raider fans. They're all just, they're always going to, they're going to hate us as long as we got Patrick Mahomes and continue to keep beating them. That's actually true. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I absolutely agree with that. I just, I, you know, it's no different than what's been going on with the Cincinnati stuff here like recently. They're, they're back at it again. The Cincinnati fans are back at it again. They're running their mouths. You got players running their mouths. You got Chase, or yeah, Chase saying something stupid that made him look very ignorant. He didn't even use it in the right context. At least when Tyreek did it about Brooke Pryor, that was that was funny. It was actually at the right time when he said, "What's your name?" That's exactly what he should have said at that point. Nobody on. Look, man, there's people in third world countries that have never had internet that know who Patrick Mahomes is. Yeah. For him to say Pat who was just plain stupid. Joel Burrow, he said Patrick Mahomes is the best until someone can knock him off. And I was very shocked to uh, hear Joel Burrow say that, but very happy that he was really telling the truth. And then Jamar Chase to kind of mess up that moment was, uh, you know, Jamar Chase knows it, but he's supporting his team. I get it, but your quarterback literally said Pat's the best. So, you, I mean. I think it was funny, and you're right, and I think it was actually the way it was presented by the media made it even better. Because they asked him first prior to telling him what Joe Burrow said. Yeah. And I thought the way they did it was almost genius to a way, you know, to a degree, because they said, you know, who, who's the best quarterback in football? Joe Burrow. Well, that's not what. Joe Burrow said, yeah. what? I mean, his face just, what? Yeah, Joe just said, pass the best. Pat yeah. who? I mean, come on, man. That was just dumb. But yeah. the Cincinnati fans have not stopped. They are still on this roll of three, you know, one and three and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? That's all great. You know, those those 
regular season Super Bowl wins that you guys had. Yeah, fantastic. Mm-hmm. There you go, Clinton. But where do you get where are those rings at? Because all I remember is empty trophy cases. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's all I've seen so far. So, you know, there's a few teams out there that have empty trophy cases and still run their mouths. They need to talk to me whenever they get one of these. Exactly. Yeah. Replica, but cheap replica. But talk. Then you come talk to us when you get one of these. Not an AFC Championship one. These are pretty much. They're a lot more nicer than a AFC Championship ring because it means you conquer the mountain and now you're kick Spartan kicking everyone down the hill. World that's champions. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's just it. And you know what, Philip is absolutely right uh, about Joe Cullen uh, on both both of his comments. But then also, uh, Jamar Chase is still crying for McDuffie shutting him down. He absolutely is. Look, man, Jamar Chase fell off last year compared to the prior year. Why? Because the refs got onto his his push off game. Everybody watched it. Everybody seen it. They allowed him to get away with it this first season. The second season wasn't he wasn't so lucky, and when he wasn't able to push off nearly as much, he didn't get the production. I mean, he pushed off on a touchdown that he got. I mean, it was so blatant against us that it was in the end zone. He pushed off and got that touchdown. I mean, his arm was extended out completely. I mean, it wasn't like it was just a little shove. He just he straight armed that dude. And caught the ball. I can't remember. I don't know if that was. I think it was Ward that he straight armed. I can't remember who it was that he straight armed in the end zone. It was either Ward or Fenton. Neither of those are. No, those guys are here anymore. Yeah. So you know, Cincinnati can talk all they want. I have a. I have a feeling that that entire state is still upset. They're going to be upset for a very long time. They do not have the coaching staff. Period. To. I'll say this, and it. It was Ward. It was Ward. He's right. Philip, it was Ward. Um, that was when he was out on an island by himself. And that was prior to uh, anybody using their head and actually giving him some help. But regardless, Cincinnati is going to be that team that is going to suffer as soon as Joe Burrow signs his contract. I'll say this forever. The reason is, is because they do not have the coaching staff to coach up players that are seventh round picks, six round picks, undrafted free agents. They can't even coach up third round picks to come in and be starters. How are they going to pay Joe Burrow and then expect to keep Chase and pay him the money he wants? Because you know Burrow's going to want $65 million a year. It's going to be that simple. That's what he's going to want. Then you got to pay Chase. You got, who's the other one that they, they got that they got to pay? Higgins, um, but he probably's going to walk. Yeah, Tyler I think Boyd. he's going to walk anyway. Tyler, Tyler Boyd's Boyd. another Tyler one, Boyd. too. Yeah, mm-hmm. Tyler Boyd. You're not going to be able to keep them all because, yeah. and you don't have the coaching staff to be able to coach up the guys that you have that you just pulled out of, out of the draft or even last year's draft prior to this, you know, this past draft. So Jamar Chase was a one off for that team. Yes, he stepped in, he played a role, didn't play it correct, but he did play the role and he did a very good job. I'm not saying he's a bad wide receiver. I pissed a lot of Cincinnati fans off because I said he was a top 15 wide receiver. No, then I'm sorry, that was Diggs. I said he was a top 15 wide receiver. Pissed a lot of Bills fans off with that one. But um, And that's fun for me. But I, I, I don't think, I mean, is he a top five? If he plays the game correctly, probably. But he, he fell off last year. They still believe that they got over on us by getting OBJ, Orlando Brown Jr. They think they got over on us. They think they took something from us. Fool, if you, if we wanted him, we would have kept him. You didn't take anything. We gave him away. Just like we gave Chris Lamones away, we gave him away. You just picked up two players that did very little to contribute. I'm not going to say. Well, Lamont's helped. Did. I thought he Lamont's did help. Helped he was great on special And that was teams. more the bank. The Chiefs were kind of banking. They were to bring him back. And the Bengals like, oh, we'll just take you real quick. So I believe their intent was to bring him back. But since the Chiefs at that point, I believe their quote unquote special team room was more experienced. They're like, okay, that's fine. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, 
obviously he was well liked in the locker room because he was at the White House with all the other guys. So I mean, obviously he's done some things. Now, will the Chiefs bring him back? Probably not. Um, I don't see that happening. But what I think at the end of the day, what we're gonna see typically is Chris no Lamont. Yeah. Uh, he's still he's, got that court. He's still got that court thing. Yeah, he hasn't been signed a team from what I see. But at the end no. of the day, regardless of what's going to happen with the Chiefs, the team could have the first could have the first ranked offense and the first ranked defense for the next five years, and the Chiefs could come down and beat them. It could be a David versus Goliath match, and then people still want to give good credit the Chiefs deserve because they say things like the holding all those other issues. Yeah. But at the end of the day, regardless, there's really nothing we can do but celebrate the fact that the Chiefs did take down a top team. When they did have a uh, basic roll through their schedule, and yeah, maybe it was weaker, and there was obviously some evidence we see that happening. And the Chiefs had won the hardest schedule. I mean, that first area period, they went six and two in those eight games, or was crazy, and they did everything they could do. I think they only lost to the Colts Ugh. and the yes, Quentin the Colts. I know it's just they just and, won. And they the weren't Bills. even thinking for that game. Well, that ooh, yeah, we had some uh, thoughts after that game, but regardless, in the day, the Chiefs are in better pastures and a better spot than what they were so i'm not concerned but i think what we're going to see pretty soon is a new chapter the chiefs playbook opening the defense is going to take that next step kind of as bryce was saying as quentin was saying in press shows and even this show the offense has a chance to do some great things regardless if it's with a player we like or with where we don't like mahomes is just going to figure it out and do what he can do yeah i think we're going to see a big uptick with uh McDo- with um with um justin ross I think he's going to be – somebody asked on Twitter a couple of days ago who was going to be, you know, that 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 Z, you know. Um, it's going to be a dogfight between the two, but I still feel like Justin Ross is he, – he's going to make a splash. I think, he, I think they were asking him. about a Z receiver because much like a cartoon, the Zs are making me bored. So <laughs> you're – yeah, I, I you know where I stand. If you're the seventh receiver on the depth chart, I'm not so sure how uh, how much of an impact you could make. But how fast can you move up from seven? If you have a history of no experience in the NFL, slash, I, you know, you have only experience since <laughs> successful in like a year. So he missed yes. one season, Quentin. He missed one season. Uh, that's a lot of football. Okay, but it's one season. In four years, he missed one season. That's twenty five percent of his NFL career. That's a fair okay, point too. But my point is, is, you act like he hasn't played a game in five years. He has. He's not a bad player. They love him. They see all. You know who he reminds me of? And I was telling Bryce this off air. He's kind of a cross between a Randy Moss and a To. In Holy the way he plays. shit! You do not just. Oh, say that. I absolutely Jack, did. I, we I might have to save this moment. We have to no. save this moment no, no, now. No. Save this show. The bar, save is, this show. the bar is set way too high. The bar. Here's is here, why I'm saying JP's this. Just this blasted through the roof. No, this okay. is why so I'm the, saying this is because uh, of his skill set. Twenty eight forty p.m. JP, you were you need to take a drug test. <laughs> All right, look, I took one yesterday and I cleared it. But look, uh-huh. here's the thing. The reason I'm saying this is is because. He has great route running ability. He's a very strong player. He's, his footwork is fantastic. He's able to maul people and rip the ball away from people when he needs to do it. He has traits of both of those players. I'm not saying he is both of those players. I'm saying he has traits of both of those players. And if you can hone in on the traits that someone has and cultivate it, you're making a great player out of them. We've said this before about different players across the league that they've they've got you know traits of Calvin Johnson. They've got traits of this guy. I'm not saying they're To. I'm not saying they're Randy Moss. I'm saying they have the traits. There's certain things that they do that Randy Moss did that To did. Man, he's a strong player. I'm just telling you guys. Watch out for him because he's not going to lay down easy. Well, you know, we're going to have to say this moment. <laughs> you just this show ain't going nowhere. It's here forever. No, that's a fair point. That's, this take will be here forever. It, it, oh, here. Six months from now, we will either come up with an idea. Oh. Well, you look what Justin Ross did at, at Clemson. He was, he was, 
he was really good. I mean, he's a he was a project a projected first round pick. His injuries held him back and made him be a UDFA. So if he can be healthy, he can be that you know a star like uh, a Terrell Owens. Yeah, you have some if, flashes. If the butts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a merry Christmas. <laughs> oh my, my God, with the same if, thing. You know, if if I have not heard a single person just come out and say, "Man, this uh, this Ross guy, you know, what he looks like a Deshaun Jackson." If someone would have said that, I'd be like, "Okay, you're still wrong, but I can accept it." Mahomes right? didn't can say that, that but he said he's turned heads. I, mean, I don't. Does yeah. that give you something? I don't want somebody to say, man, he's going to be a great guy in the NFL because four years after he left college, we're talking about that one time he was really good at Clemson against Alabama. But he burned a Bama defense. Oh, though. congratulations. Ha- happy days. Congra- Bama happy defense. Days. You know how hard it is to burn a Bama defense? That's, yeah. that's hard. Yeah, that's extremely hard. I think when, he could do really well. I don't, see, I don't right. see him blowing through the moon like four years ago. Uh, Look, I don't. I'm not saying he is going to be the best wide receiver that's ever touched the planet, the field. I'm saying he has traits of certain players that can make him great. And when Mahomes signs off on this kid, which I'm going to take him over anybody, <laughs> thanks, <for> anybody. <laughs> I'm going to say, <laughs> Phil, um, I'm going to take him. His word over anybody's when it comes to wide receivers because he knows exactly who he's playing with. Mahomes said he's turned heads. He's making waves in this team. I mean, he's worked with him for two years now almost. I mean, they've built some type of rapport. It didn't take long for Mahomes and D to get a rapport. So. I mean, exactly. Orlando Scandrick turned heads, but that wasn't necessarily for a good thing. Oh, he definitely turned heads. Where's he the ball? Where's the like, ball? Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, man. man. Quentin's just – man, your name fits you perfect. Um I'm cha- I may have to come up with a new one tonight. I I'll love this. Up. Quinn's going off. Here we go. Jim, Tony Romo voice. Tony Romo, Jim Nance voice. <laughs> well, at least he's not That's doing it now. Here's a guy. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, I'm just saying he's got traits of players that are going to make – that if they cultivate it correctly, he's going to be really good. And yeah. I think people are going to really wish to God that they didn't sit here and slam him on the daily because they haven't seen him play in a while. The the problem is, is oh, that boy. I'm not slamming him that hard. The problem is, is you have gaslit everybody in such a far direction that anytime I just want to hold the brakes, I want to pull the horses back a little bit. It seems so bad. I just Wait a minute. Don't you think... don't want to pull the horses back. You said he wasn't going to make the roster. I'm like, whoa there, buddy. Hold on there, buddy. He's too you good know? not to make the roster. I Absolutely. Have to that. I feel like he should at least have seventh, an opportunity. The seventh wide receiver. The Chiefs are going to have seven receivers on the roster. Four this weeks Mark, ago, you Marcus said he's on the roster. did not do much la- last year, but he stepped up when the Chiefs needed him. And not only that, four weeks ago, you said neither Ross brother was going to make the roster. I said I would be surprised. If I'm both not of them made the roster, what happens if what happens if he makes the roster and he ends up being third, fourth on the depth? I part? would. Hey, I love to eat my words. I love it when players prove me wrong. You know why? Because that means I, that. my team, my team did great, and I am loyal to the logo behind me. Okay, if Justin Ross comes out and he's the second coming of Jesus, okay, <laughs> I will be very happy. I'd make me question a lot of my life decisions, but I'd be happy. <laughs> I think it's going to make you question a lot of your theories. That's fine. Well, you know what they say? You know, theories theories are made to be revised. That's, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. You're right. You're right. They are. I'll give you that. Um, Justin Ross is going to – I think he's really going to move this team. And I think he's oh, gonna, my he's, man, he's, my he's gonna, guy. You can't Justin join Ross the dark side. ability to do something for this team, and I think he's going to. Now, John Ross – I don't even think he's going to make the 53-man roster. But Justin Ross, he's going to do something, I think, for this team if he can stay healthy. That's the main thing. You know why You know why everybody cheered for the Jedi? Because they were the underdogs. Because there were less of them, okay? And they came out on top. What's all right? Mean? Y'all, well, what's the y'all are hanging out with Darth Vader, all right? Oh, uh, he's talking about, what is it, Star Trek? Star Wars? Star Wars, Wars <laughs> I do. Dude, we just we just lost like eight subscribers because of that comment. <laughs> Come on, JP. I, I'm sorry, I'm not a Star Wars guy. I don't I didn't get into it then and I don't get into it now. Jedi. All right. 
I mean, somebody's going to end up with a black eye. All Holy I'm saying people. is, what's this say? Quentin, I see why the kid. <laughs> oh, whatever. Whatever, Scott. Um, by the way, you never DM me. You were supposed to DM us, and you never did. That's your fault. Uh, anyway, I'm just saying the kids got traits if they cultivate it correctly. And to uh, Bryce's point, if he stays healthy, which I think he will, they wouldn't <laughs> have signed him to a contract when they did if they didn't believe in him. But it's a UDFA contract, and it was a high I understand, one, but, but it's <clears> one of those low-risk, high rewards. I mean, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. is getting paid seven hundred and fifty thousand. It's pennies. You it's, know how many players on our team are making seven hundred and fifty grand right now? Uh, a ton of them. Probably exactly. twenty-five. Hold on, I can count. I think mm. there's thirty-five making a million or less. That. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. There's a good amount. So there are 23 so the money- guys, and some of them are guys including uh, Nico Romingo, Dendrick Prince, Truman Jones. Like Denarius. these are guys that are. Most of these guys aren't going to make the roster because you're only carrying these many guys. Currently, the Chiefs have 91 guys under contract. Hmm. So a good chunk of these guys are going to be cut, including a ton of them that are making less than a million dollars. You only have them on the roster to take bodies up to camp, and maybe a couple of them end up making the roster. Like I think Prince is going to. This show Mm -hmm. has been very high on Prince because Mm -hmm. of his skill set. So, you know, there's a chance for one or two of these guys to make the roster. How many guys from last year? How many guys from last year that are still on this roster that actually started last year? Are making under a million dollars. Um, well, let's see. I mean, I, I don't like Shane Michelle's <clears throat> making under a million dollars, and he was on the fifty-three man roster. So I don't know if you want to count. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about guys that actually played the game and helped us win a Super Bowl. Well, that's the whole rookie class right there. Um, I would have to like really dive in. Oh, there's look. more than the twenty that I counted because. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm going through here. It looks like. Let's see. Oh, there. It's not set up by the amount of money set up. So by base salary here on over the cap. So it's even more than that. It's probably it closer is. to 30. I think it's 35. There's 35 under a million. And I want to say there was 27 or 28 that were at 750 grand. Yeah. One of them, there was a couple of them that were like 940. But, yeah. 940 I mean, is sort of that next step up. Yeah. So my point is, I don't care how much he's making. We have players on our team that helped us win a Super Bowl last year that made 750 grand. So the money aspect means nothing. They signed him because they believe in him. Brett okay. Veach doesn't like dead cap space. Are you higher like on Sean money. Ross or Justin Ross? I'm high on Justin Ross. John right. Ross, is, I think, is a very speedy guy. He's got a lot of speed. I don't know that he has the tangibles – to make the roster this year. Okay, he's making a million dollars. So he's mm-hmm. making John Ross is making more than he's Justin. He's a vet. He's he's been in the league longer. Yeah, well, five. Okay. That's why. I just, you know, I mean, he's been in the league there. longer, so that's going to happen. Blake Belt was making a million dollars too. So Blake Belt's been in the league 7 years, he's making a million bucks. So it's not like that really, I mean, it doesn't matter. Veach doesn't like dead cap space. I in mean, fact, he, right now, Frank Clark's dead cap space is the most the Chiefs have had since Beach has been yeah. the GM. Dead cap space for one year doesn't mean anything. It's like signing a guy. It's like signing a guy to a one-year deal. It's like, does it, you know, is it really that impactful if it doesn't work out for you, end up cutting a guy? It's that mm-hmm. dead cap money that rolls over for multiple years, which is, you know, you start to get problems. So if you sign a guy, because like I said, you carry 53 guys in, you're at 91. So you're going to c- have to cut almost 40 people. And well, less than 16 the guys you put on. Yeah, less than 16 guys you stick on practice squad and the other three or four maybe you can put on IR. But I mean, regardless, yeah, I agree with you. But I'm just saying every team's going into the league, into the training camp with 90 or 91 players. My point is, is that, that kid has the tangibles to be a star. If he stays healthy, which I think he will, because he's had a very, very strong 
uh, medical staff working with him. In fact, he's seen the same back specialist in Green Bay that every other player seen, and he's good to go. They said he's going to be just fine. Yeah, I'm going to need to see that back specialist after carrying the show. Well, you're, I don't know if you're carrying anything. Right now you're carrying that beard. But uh, anyway. You guys, every week. We Everybody. might have to stop banning the Justin Ross, John Ross talk. We should. Uh, you know, camp. you should have to like. You got. We need a like Justin slash John Ross jar, where every time you bring him up, you got to like put him in a bucket. In like ten days, you'll be able to buy me some barbecue because I'm never the first one to bring him up. Well, no, you're never because you don't like him. It has nothing to do with them. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> you don't like the man. You just don't like. You don't like Justin Ross. I'm going to put that in your name. <laughs> that's a lot of cute. Uh, that's a lot. Q. That name's going to no, the beard knowledge is leaving. It's Q. I hate Justin Ross. I doubt everyone. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right, Quinn, I'm on your side of this one. They got a little too radical. All right, moving on to the last <laughs> topic of the show. Um, like that. that felt good. Can you say that one more time? Oh, they're, God. They're coming a little too radical. Oh, God. Ooh, ooh, that feels good. Uh, don't worry, JP. I'm on your side still on certain things. You're never um, on <laughs> A couple of different things. We look at the point in the career and everything that's happened with the Chiefs. We've seen a lot has happened. Um, I might have to, uh, Scott. When we look at the whole NFL career, specifically with Patrick Mahomes, and we see a lot. Um, Chiefs trade up from 27 to pick 10 and drop to him. We see there's been many things happening through on the line. His first game, he did pretty good against the Broncos. Keep to leave. Uh, famously said he had an AK-47 arm. The next season, he took Lee by storm. And it's been a dream ever since. I want to know from you guys, what moment made you think Patrick Mahomes, that's him? That's the guy. I want to hear from each and every one of you guys. Yeah. What is your moment? We're going to start off with Quentin. Let me, yeah, let me start this off. So just to add a little bit more context there, there was a video going around the Twitter sphere, and it was sort of a highlight reel of Patrick Mahomes just diamond the Broncos defense in that first game that he played. And uh, what I've noticed of it is Patrick Mahomes just never stepped in his throws. And despite that, he's still throwing lasers. And it's yep. like, you can see the progression despite how good he was. Um, he has, he continued to improve. So I, you know, you don't realize it until he changed. If you go and watch clips of that game, he never stepped into any of his throws and is still just, lasering the ball down mm -hmm. the field. Yeah. So I think the first time I, I think I'm just going to go with that Steelers game. And I know maybe that seems like a cop out because, you know, it was this, his third game in the NFL, but for the first time in this century, a chiefs quarterback had six touchdown passes in a game. Uh, that Dawson, was pretty magical. Len Dawson did it at 1964. Which sidebar to throw six touchdowns in the 60s is a whole other conversation that Absolutely. I'm sure we're going to have. I'm surprised point. that's not talked about as much, to but be honest. Patrick Mahomes having six touchdown passes against a quality defense, right? We know the Steelers always <clears> put out quality defenses. Um, and to just continue to lead the team, because if you look at the overall progression of that game, the final score was 42-37. Uh, even though Kansas City jumped out to an early lead, Pittsburgh stayed in that game, and there was never any, there there was never any like lay down, like oh I'm good, you know, oh I had three touchdowns on the game, I'm good, I got it there. Um, maybe that comes from his Texas Tech years of just always needing to continue to score, but you could tell he was leading that team. There was he had complete control despite the fact that he had he had some pass rush in his face. He had it, man. And I think after that game, there wasn't one play where I was like, you know, oh, he's for real. I think it was just sort of after looking back at that game and just he had six touchdown passes like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mm -hmm. when you're like, OK, this is this is going to be something special. So yep. I'm going to go with just that overall Pittsburgh game. All right. Okay. Hey, really quick. I want to say happy birthday to Lynn Dawson. Yeah. Today is his birthday. I saw that. I know that, he's yeah. passed away, but he's an icon, one of the nicest men I've ever met. Happy birthday, Len. Wish you were still here. Okay, Bryce. 
For me, I got to go with Chief uh, versus Rams 2018 with a final score of 54 to 51. What a game that was. Crazy game. I know we lost it, but it was it was a crazy crazy game. It was just crazy. Yeah. Great game. Yes, yeah, didn't uh, didn't he have did he have five or six touchdowns yeah, in that game? Five game too. He had six, uh, right? Yep, he did. Yeah. Yeah, six touchdowns. Six I great game. It was a great game. I agree with you. That was I mean, still, I think that – isn't that the history of the Monday night football games? Most yeah, that's the highest scoring Monday night yeah. football game. And, unfortunately, I can't look back at that game fondly. Because yeah, I, I can't watch it. I'll be honest with you. But Too yeah, much – that mm-hmm. – it, it, I can only imagine what that would have been like to watch that game as a non-Chiefs slash Rams fan and to mm-hmm. just watch – that is the definition of just chaos. Yes. That was a chaotic game <laughs> no because defense. it had – it had a fumble recovery for a touchdown. I mean, it was – it was a hundred plus points in a football game. Yeah, that was a crazy game. So you know what the awesome part about that game was, though, we had, at the time, I think we were ranked 29th or 30th overall in defense, and they were ranked third, and we still put up 51 mm-hmm. points. Andy that Reed. to me, right there, is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, I. Look, what, I don't know if this is going to be, and I, I think me and Caleb probably are going to hit on the same one because we both talked about this one. I think it was the Chris Conley play. Yeah, I guess what the 49ers th- at Arrowhead. Yeah, that was I, – <clears throat> I watched him run the Fran Tarkenton. For anybody that doesn't know who he is, he ran for like 100 yards before he ever passed the ball six yards. That was just his game. He did it every game his entire career, but he ran, he ran, he ran, he circled back. He ran, went from left to right, back to left, back to right, and just drilled Conley in the end zone. And that was, that was the moment that I thought, okay, this kid is phenomenal. Sidearm slider with a football and just drilled him. And Conley stepped up into it. I'm not going to say he didn't. But it was just the fact that he threw it in the exact spot he needed to throw it. So that's mine. Caleb? So mine is not that one, JP. Um, as we you guys bring up a lot of great moments, um, the one that really was like, wow, this guy is special, was against the Raiders. I believe it was week uh, four, week five. Um, it's when the Chiefs were down 10 nothing, and in the first quarter, the Chiefs – Played at the Raiders Stadium for the very last time. I forgot what it was called. Mahomes just went Oakland off. Coliseum. Yeah, the Oakland Coliseum. Mahomes just went off, went crazy. Four touchdowns in one quarter. I mean, he was making the Raiders defense look like a bunch of little kids. Yep. It was ridiculous from what he was seeing. I mean, DeMar- he made Demarcus Robinson look like a star. And for a little while, I was like, oh, Demarcus Robinson might be able to do something. Uh, hindsight uh, pains me to think that. But when you look at that as a whole, he was sending Kelsey over the middle, over shoulder passes, just saying, just launching the ball downfield. And he did that all pretty much without Tyreek. Because remember, Tyreek had that arm injury. Jalen yeah. Ramsey fell on his arm, caused some issues with his rib cage. But Cole Harmon got his first NFL touchdown pass, slammed the ball in the end zone. I mean, that game was so dominant from that standpoint. Just to bring up some stats from that, he had four touchdowns, 443 yards. And his four touchdowns came in the second half. Just imagine if they were still hitting in the third and fourth quarter. He would have been well over 500 yards. He could have had six or seven touchdowns, and mm-hmm. that would have been a great game. We see weird things happen against the Raiders, but for the Chiefs to basically go boom, 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 boom on the Raiders that quickly, and John Gruden was over there like, what? And the same thing happened with Derek Carr. I remember a missed field goal went crazy wide left. I bet just showed me right there that that guy is a baller is a baller. No one can stop him. He's a competitor. He is going to compete to the final, the final whistle, no matter what happens. That just shows me that's what you need. And that also showed me this. It does not matter if it's third and 12, fourth and 15, third and nine. Mahomes is going to deliver. This is not the Alex Smith days of age where you throw this third and seven. You're like, oh, well, there's a good chance I could just go and take the bathroom break now. It's going to be incomplete pass. So <laughs> from what we see there, that showed me all I need to see from Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. One thing I will say, and I have admitted this, I was wrong numerous times. Oh, here, let's put this up here really quick. Um, 
the fourth and nine play in 2018. The Ravens. That was versus the Ravens. That was a great, yeah. great play. Um, yeah, because it was fourth and nine, and he threw the ball 40 yards down the field. Yep. Yeah. Rolling yeah, right. Insane. Oh. <laughs> yeah. First game that of the first year, it was almost like they were running a run and shoot offense from the yeah. Houston Oilers days. Yeah. I mean, it was exactly. It was a crazy offense, and yeah. you know you had to. But yeah. Mm, yep. Yeah. I agree with both of those. They were both great plays. Uh, Scott, the Chargers won. Yeah. Sherman had uh, a blown touchdown pass. By one point, wasn't it? it? was by uh, one point. They won like by a, 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 a 10 points, I think. I it think? was 29-28 or something. Or no, no, no. It was not 29. The Chiefs were in the 30s that season. It was like 38-28, 38-31, something like that. But I always remember that because Sherman had a long touchdown pass. I was like, oh, Sherman can run? And like, oh, we're going to actually That's use awesome. the fullback some more. So I'm like, okay, this is pretty nice. So yeah. it the one thing I will say is that um, I didn't agree, and I've admitted I've been wrong about this numerous times. I didn't agree with him starting the second year at the beginning. I didn't agree with the trade. I thought they should have left him at the time. I thought they should have let him sit one more season learn a little bit more because he was such a gunslinger and a Brett Favre style player at the time. I was a little nervous and the fact that he was, you know, a little young, but then after that Denver game in 2017, when he threw for almost 300 yards, yeah, he didn't have a touchdown. He had a rushing touchdown. He had a rushing touchdown. I thought, okay, this is, this kid's, he could, he could start, he could start and he could win us some games. I, I, I was a hundred percent wrong. Um, and I'll admit that. I mean, there's no reason not to. But it, 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 I was scared, to be honest with you. I was a little fearful of him starting. Does the you know that that year I was I was scared that that what was going to happen, and he ended up bringing us to the AFC Championship game and almost winning it. That close. Yeah, I mean, a bad call away from three, winning. No, it. well, three third and tens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, the ball didn't touch Edelman's hands. What else? All oh, the phantom um, pat, roughing the passer. I don't know how that yeah. was a roughing the passer. Very dark day for NFL officiating. And then also you had a Chris Hogan caught the ball, but the ball hit the ground. They called a catch. I'm surprised the Chiefs were even in there to begin with, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, but I agree. because of that game, the franchise changed, and we knew mediocrity was not something that Chiefs won of, so they launched players. Bob Sun is no longer here. And the rest has changed. We got a great defensive coordinator, even though there's been some frustrating times, but it's worked out. So yes, it has. Now I have one for you guys, and I asked Bryce this off air. Do you? I want to know, and I'm going to start with Caleb. Actually, I'll start with Bryce. I want to go Bryce, Caleb, Quentin, because Quentin, I know what he's going to say almost to a T. Um, Is this a Justin Ross John Ross question? No, 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 not at all. Well, I mean, Justin Ross could be a no, part okay. of it. Okay, no, no, we're good. Move on. I'm just saying, question. he could be a part of this, but it's a different question altogether. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that this could be the season that Mahomes breaks the yard and touchdown record, the NFL record? I I have already got my answer. Bryce, what's yours? And what Wait, are the what? yards and what are the touchdowns? That's what I want to know from each one of you guys. Uh. Yards and touchdowns for this season. If you think he's good, if you think he can break it, and what are the yards and touchdowns going to be? Man, that's a good question. You know, I think he, I think he can break it, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking around maybe, thinking high expectations for him. I'm thinking around like 55 touchdowns, around that, and. Hmm. Huh? Fifty five hundred passing yards, maybe something like that. So you don't you think he'll tie the record or break the record? Because the record's fifty five and five, right? The record's fifty five touchdowns, five thousand forty seven, five thousand. Let me see, five thousand forty seven yards passing. Yeah, I set believe. by Peyton Manning. Five thousand four hundred seventy seven yards passing, fifty five touchdowns. Yeah. He so, can definitely break it. He can definitely break it. I think he has a great chance of doing that this season. I think it's uh, is is this wide receiver group going to step up? And I think it's really up to them. And if if they play their role, I think I think he has a great chance to break that this season. Okay, Quentin or Caleb. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, this is a huge feat. I mean, when you're talking about that Broncos offense, they were destroying teams. Whose offense was? Not this year. I think he could do it next year. I think he can have, let's say, close. I say he can have anywhere between 43 and 50 touchdowns. And that's a weird number. Between 43 and 50 touchdowns. I can, I can see him breaking the yards. Touchdowns, though, the way the Chiefs are no more, a little more balanced with the run game, I just don't see him doing that, per se. I mean, with Peyton Manning and the Broncos, I mean, they really didn't have the best quote-unquote run game. They're more like running gun with all the different weapons. So I feel like he could possibly break the passing yards this year. But when it comes to touchdowns, I think we'll be seeing more of a next year when you guys like Rasheed Rice and others can step up. I'm not saying it's out of the question. It, would not, it wouldn't surprise me. I just feel like with the group right now, I don't see it happening. Okay. What do you think, Quentin? I think, well I... – the question is, can he? Absolutely. Can he do it? Yes, 100%. This year, will this year with it? the group that he has is what I'm yeah. asking. Will he do it? No. No, he won't do it. And, and here's my justification why. Um, in order to do that, I think the team has to be – the defense has to be bad. And I don't think the defense will be bad. Because what happened in the last time when he had the 50-touchdown year, he had to score all those points. Mm-hmm. He, there was no margin for error. The Chiefs defense was so bad that we had to continue to go out there and throw the ball. What do we talk about and to a certain extent criticize Andy Reid for doing? Oh, it's the fourth quarter. We're up by 10. We're up by 14. There's seven minutes left. I'm going to run the ball. I'm not going to put my, uh, you know, I'll sit my guys. I won't put Mm -hmm. anybody in harm's way. So, you know, you do that multiple times a year. Well, you're knocking out, you know, in theory at least, multiple touchdown passes, a lot of yards because you're giving that to the running back. So if the defense is going to be where we expect it to be, where we want it to be, I don't think that he does because Andy Reid isn't going to give him the the opportunity to. Obviously, he can. I I haven't seen anything Patrick Mahomes can't do. He he can throw the ball parallel to the ground. I mean, he can throw the ball on one bad foot with a bad toe. I mean, he can do it one arm beh- tied behind his back, he can do it with his other hand, okay? I haven't seen anything this man can't do with a football in his hands. He can throw it out of Arrowhead Stadium, okay? Literally mm-hmm. out from yes, the field, yeah, yeah. outside of it, okay? He did so, it. That was 250 feet, by the way. Yeah. Can he do it 100%? It's really this, to me, is not a question on Andy Reid. It's more of a question on this coaching staff, specifically – Andy Reid and what how he's going to run the offense. And I don't think that he's going to get the opportunity. Now, he did break the overall record for overall uh, yards in terms yeah, of passing and yards. rushing combined. Yes. So maybe, maybe he can top that again, right? But I just don't think that he's going to have the opportunity to do so because Kansas City isn't going to need him to put up that many yards slash touchdowns because this defense is going to be good enough to where we won't have to put everything on Patrick Mahomes. This defense is going to be good enough. Okay. Well, here's what I look at. And the only reason I'm saying this, and Caleb Boy says I shoot for the moon. I'm not really No, you shoot for, for another galaxy. Well, that may be true at some point. But <laughs> I say he can. I I think he will. And, the, and there's my justification behind this. There's so much doubt with everybody when it comes to other fan bases, other teams, the fact that we, you know, gave up Juju Smith-Schuster, we're going with, you know, a lot of rookies again. Um, And the criticism that Mahomes has gotten of late for certain things. Andy has loosened the leash a whole lot. In fact, if you guys watch the quarterback when it comes out, when he did injure his ankle, Andy said, I'm pulling you out. And he said, oh, hell no, you're not. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm staying in. Andy left him in. Well, he so forced feel- him to go get an x-ray. He did. Well, he did, but then that's so fine. Behind the scenes I mean, stuff. He, so he Pretty didn't soon. just, you know, say, all right, all right, buddy, you can stay in there. I mean, he I understand. Him to, to but my point is, is that he did let him stay in. He could have pulled him. He could have said, no, I don't, you know, you're, it's a high ankle sprain regardless. I know it's not broken. I know you don't have a torn tenant, but it's a high ankle sprain. They're just as bad. I don't want you in the game, but he left him in. So 
I look at it from two different perspectives. I see Mahomes wanting to go out there and prove not only that he can do it, but prove for the rookies that are on this team that they can do it. So if he breaks 5,500 yards and breaks 55 touchdowns this year, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I just wouldn't be. I'm not saying that Andy's going to, you know, Andy has been kind of allowing him to score more towards the end of the games uh, as of late, which has been great. I mean, now, of course, you know, two minutes left, he's not going to sit there and say, hey, you know, go ahead and throw a bomb. You know, make sure you score one more time. He's not Sean Payton, but he does, he has, he's loosened the leash. And if he comes out this year and wants to really prove something, and Andy allows him to prove something, this could very well be one of the, the year that he breaks that that mark. And nobody's going to be able to touch it. I think once he does break it, I think he's going to hit 6,000 yards at some point in his career. Well, the th- extra yeah, game helps. Yeah. Uh, yes, it does. I just don't think that there's the opportunity there because if this defense, if we do feel this defense is is better than last year, or at least to some extent the same. And, you know, this offense, we know what it can look like without having a superstar wide receiver because we have a guy like Travis Kelsey. And I just don't think that the opportunity is going to be there because you don't need to. And once again, the other criticism we have of Andy Reid is that he likes to pocket stuff. And if Mm -hmm. he's up by seven and, you know, late in the game, he's not going to pull out a corn dog play. He's, he's going to keep it vanilla, and it's going to make the game closer than it probably could have been or should have been. Unfortunately, you're right so, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Kansas City will end up kicking two field goals in a game where you really feel like they should have scored a touchdown or two. So I just well, think that's going to limit some of his stats. I want I will say this. A lot of that came from other play calls as well. Last year, if you noticed, Andy allowed him to do a lot more than he did the year prior. The year prior, it was stay in the pocket, stay in the pocket. That wasn't Andy's mindset so much as it was somebody else's but that last year he was able to do a lot more than he did in the 21 season so i'm wondering given the fact that he has these new wide receivers a new crew with the exception of course of travis kelsey and mvs Mm -hmm. if andy allows him to go out there and really try to showcase what these kids can do Maybe not in the first three or four games, but again, last year he was, they had, nobody dreamed that they would be 11th overall at the end of the season. Nobody dreamed that. Not with six rookies on defense. Nobody ever thought that was going to happen. Six starting rookies. And he still threw for 42 touchdowns in the regular season. Ran for what, two or three more or something. And then had 5,250 mm-hmm. yards plus, you know, whatever the rushing yards were. I don't know mm-hmm. what it was. As a couple hundred, he, he passed that. that yeah. Uh, so what's to say time. that – and then he had – remember, he had a veteran in Juju Smith-Schuster out there. He had a veteran in MVS, which take one of those guys away because you don't have that now. So who knows? I mean, I just, I mean, I, I wanted to bring it up because I thought it was a pretty viable question to see if somebody thought that this might be the year that he could actually do it. I feel like he can, but uh, yeah, again, I, you brought I, I up a valid the, point, you know? Yeah. I don't want the Twitter mob to come after me for this reason, <laughs> because I do think he can do it. There, There's no, there, I'm not questioning his ability. I just don't know if the opportunity is there. You know, old yeah. habits die hard is the, is the phrase. And, while Andy Reid continues to be innovative on the offensive line, I think at his core, that's something of holding some stuff back for the playoffs, you know, making sure that you beat people, but you don't beat them by 24. Yeah. I think those are just things that that's ingrained in. Unless it's the and, Raiders. And it's, it's not gonna, it, it's not going to change. So, you know, I don't think that he's able to do it. And if he does it, it's because he's getting into some shootouts again. And I don't mm. know if we want to see that. <clears throat> Well, this season, looking at this record, there may be some shootouts. I mean, looking at this schedule. There There's always going to be shootouts. one or two, but yeah, that but first year enough. it was I mean, like, yeah. And yeah. his 50 touchdown season, I mean, he got 50 like at the very end. It, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't like 
you know, and he had multiple, like I said, that Steelers game, he had six. That shit out he got with the Rams, right? There were so many games where he was really dragging that. <clears throat> we had 10 upwards. touchdowns in two games, his first two so, games. So, yeah, my point, my point being that he, he had to jump out to those leads, and I just don't see that being necessary. So he's not going to want to do it. Andy Reid, not for Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, um, anybody else got anything? Uh, the Royals won, but nobody cares because they're still bad. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, <laughs> there's your there's your Royals update. Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't know. Hopefully Mahomes can turn that team around at some point. I mean, he has a minority order, so maybe he can do something to help him out a little bit. I don't know when that'll happen, but uh, by the way, anybody that uh, doesn't know this, Mahomes production company that he owns produced the quarterback. They were the production oh. company for the quarterback. And he had uh, basically input on what was done and how it was done. Yeah, so we'll talk about that when that comes out. I think but, that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. That he, you know, I mean, the kid's got his hand in so much stuff. He's going to be a billionaire in the next three yeah. years. So, uh, but with that being said, we appreciate you coming on, Bryce. Tell everybody where yeah. they can find you. Uh, Arrowhead News and Rumors Report on YouTube. Yeah. What days do you do it? Usually I try and keep it to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's usually what I try and do. Okay. Is there a certain time or do you just, or do you record it or do you do it live? Uh, record it. 6 p.m. Okay. Eastern time. Okay. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, we appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your insight. Somebody that's young like you, it's good to see that you have the knowledge because there's 40-year-olds out there that don't have your knowledge. Mm -hmm. I see it every day on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, uh, this show was sponsored by Manscaped. I don't want to get into the specifics right now because we do have a youngster on the show, but everybody knows what Manscapes are, when, what Manscapes is, I should say. And uh, if you go on manscaped.com, use the promo code CheeseFocus, you will get 20% off your entire order. Anything you want to use to groom yourself head to toe, they have it. Make sure you check them out. And uh, we will, we appreciate everybody for joining, but we will talk to you guys again on Thursday. Is that correct, you guys? Thursday? Oh, yep, Thursday. When Thursday. All right, guys. Peace out. Talk to you Thursday.